Yep. Uh, okay. Thanks, Emtina. Let's get started. So our main focus on this day four of week 10 in terms of careers, we are going to be focusing on process thinking. Process thinking, I think, it's a term that is really known, but also it's a term that most people also do not, I mean, have, are going to be hearing for the very first time. So yeah, that's what we are going to be diving into. For us to understand it better, Let's have a discussion about this. So we have already started 2024, like globally. So can someone tell me, like, have you made any plans or any goals for this year, just things to achieve in this year? You know, or even though you didn't set it on in January, have you at least recently planned to learn something new this year? I mean, after 10 Academy, of course. Have you planned to learn something else new? Anyone who have, please, if you fit into one of these categories, please raise your hand and share with us. Anyone? Okay, Fenuel said, Swimming. Fenya, are you able to speak so that you can open your mic and I ask a few questions? <laughs> oh, not right now. Okay, it's all right. But in the chat box, you can share with us what do you think is going to be taking you? Of course, uh, just start with uh, when do you want to start learning to swim and what do you think it's going to take you to succeed? the process to get there. Yep, you can share us within the chat box. And in the meantime, anyone else who wants to share with us what they want, anything new they want to learn this year? Anyone? Okay, Binyam. Um, learning advanced Python and Rust. I'm so bad at low level backend programs, so I'm trying to learn other stuff. Oh, God. Okay. I have been so muted. Sorry. So, Binyam, I was saying, um, so with the language that you want to learn, and so can you share with us, have you split that plan in months or in days or just in semesters? Like, you want to do it at the very last month of the year? Like, how is it? How, how, what steps are you going to be taking for you to get there? Or have you, you haven't planned yet? Like, just tell us how it is. Okay. I have a plan, kind of a roadmap. Mm -hmm. On my, on my note-taking application, basically Obsidian. And I kind of advocated about nine months to finish finish off everything and by nine months be professional. 
be a professional, you know, on the non register that I want to do. So I already have a roadmap to learn mm -hmm. uh, each each and every step of uh, to take me through each and every step of you know the training and learning process. Yeah. So okay. And you have started already. Since I'm busy with Ten Academy and other stuff, I have not really. I really am not allocating you know, the required amount of time. You know, I was planning to study like three hours a day, but I'm like reading like roughly about like not even like an hour whenever I get the chance to do so. But I hope I'm gonna you know start studying more. Okay. And I, okay. when I finish this training. Okay, got it, got it. And so Fenuel said that um, for him, his target is learning how to swim and he's been allocating time. Uh, I mean, allocating time is the most important thing and he's planning to do it after 10 Academy. And he so far found a trainer and it will take about two weeks for him to be uh to know like the basics of swimming by himself okay that is great so this takes me to uh the main topic for today i mean when we are planning to do anything just starting with ourselves when we are starting to do anything and uh the easy approach to achieving it is always thinking it in process you know uh you know that the big goal you know the main outcome you want to achieve is to be a pro in that certain thing or to achieve that certain mission but when you keep focusing on the outcome most of the time it doesn't even happen i think it has happened to us uh so many times where you plan where you start a year and you are like oh this year i'm going to be learning this kind of language let's say you want to learn a new language let's say german a dutch language and the year completes and you haven't done anything because you kept looking at the outcome you want to do but you never set the process of you getting there so let's put it in the workplace perspective you know i brought up this example so that we get on the same page on what we are referring to here because in a workplace perspective it's kind of a little bit different but still in the same line so let's go so we have two different organization and uh majority of organization of course they focus on process thinking but others uh you find that you are part of the department that focuses on outcome thinking you know outcome thinking it means being obsessed with the results you are trying to achieve i mean you are just focusing on the main goal the end of the journey you know but the process thinking is about being obsessive about the processes you are trying to achieve your results being obsessed about the process the very very small small steps and what does it mean i have here an example here of the company uh that i would not say its name but i know that they operate in this way from the background here and this is the main results and what i think we should have done better so started the company started in 2020 i mean the main program started in 2020 and the mission was to put 2 million young people in jobs by 2023 in technical jobs by the way data scientists data analysts any so this is their main biggest mission you can imagine 2 million young people in just a distance like time distance of just 10 years so the deliverables were like this they had to hire many people because the operations are going to be much they had to this they had to invest really really a lot in marketing they had to invest in enrollment like oh we are targeting two million people that means in 10 years we should be having uh 200 graduates per year 
So they had to push and invest so much into enrollment. Everyone had to know about the company. Everyone had to know that about the courses they are providing. Everyone had to register and everyone had to really have that, that kind of commitment to stick into learning and make sure that they get to the finish line. And then they had to put effort into course delivery. And the course delivery is mostly online and it's self lectured. So like you have to read by yourself and then you get to do the assessment by yourself. And mind you, these are technical courses. Like there are no kind of tutorials you have to go through to for you to get better guidance. But the online courses also, they were designed in a way that you can help yourself of course you can read and watch different videos guidance guiding videos and everything else and then uh get to do your assessments at the end of the week and that was it so they had to invest in dates cohorts after cohorts milestones saying that um i mean according to the targeted conversion rate what do i mean by conversion rate I mean, like, uh, for us to get 200,000 learners or trainees graduating per year, it means we should be having, like, we should be starting with 500,000, you know, so that we can get a better conversion rate. It's like what you target to get from your biggest, um, your biggest milestone. So the expectation was that 70% of the recruited should graduate, 70%. If they recruited, they should graduate and they should match the 200,000 trainees. And of course, they had to focus on the cost and the budget. But what results do we have now? It's been four years and they have only achieved, mind you, this actually was published. So, you know, it's already outside for this company. So in just after four years, they have only 100,000, 120,000 who have gone into the trainings and who have been placed into different jobs. 120. This is out of 800,000 that were supposed to be placed after four years. Hopefully, I'm making my calculation very, very well, but you understand. Just very, very few has been already placed. And then in a cohort of, to put it, to break it like really, really down, in a cohort of 1K registrations, like 1K, that's 1,000 registrations, only 10 graduate per country. These are their numbers. So here are the good case practices I believe they should have focused on. Of course, they constantly change their strategies and they are starting to actually invest in this. They're starting to not look at the bigger picture, to not look at these numbers, this 70%. They're starting to not look at this 2 million, this whatever they have to achieve, the numbers they have to achieve per year. And they're starting to focus specifically on small details. You know, the focus on a student learning journey from day one. How do they have to welcome the student? How are they going to be shaping his journey? How are they going to invest in ensuring that this student doesn't drop out from the program in any way? You know, so they're starting to focus on very, very small things. And they're also starting to focus on students' challenges and requests. Are the students feeling very, very overwhelmed and they need some break? Because before, they were very, very obsessed in achieving numbers that their program didn't even have one week rest. You know, what? even though it was a new year or Christmas, there were no one week rest, you know, not one day. So they started to focus on challenges and requests because we are young people. And of course, I mean, to any kind of human, if you get overwhelmed, you feel like you no longer fit into the place, so you end up dropping out. And then they started to focus on the flexibility of the program. How can they make the applications a little bit easier? How can they make the courses a little bit lectured so that they can have like one day per week where they meet a lecturer, like a real human, 
not just going through videos. And then they started to focus on career readiness, you know, by doing like what we do here, focusing on um, career or uh, specific guidance programs, you know, because before you would just go into your technical skills, but when you are graduating, you fail your interviews, you start to, you don't know how to craft your CV, you fail the interviews, you don't even know how to look for certain jobs, you know, because nobody taught you that. So they would find that people, some people are graduating, but um, they're not getting the jobs they promised them to, to get, uh, simply because there were no career readiness programs. And then they started also encouraging entrepreneurship because if you are not looking forward to be hired by anyone, of course you are looking forward to be working by yourself. So this is what we mean by when we start working for organizations, how do we bring up ideas where we do not have to focus on these because this is very, very overwhelming. It doesn't allow any room for thinking. So how do we focus our thinking or mindset to be thinking about these small, small processes we have to take for us to get to where we want to go. So this is just in a workplace perspective. This is a very simple example, and I believe it's very understandable. So you would think it's obvious, the difference. This is the difference without an example. So planning that do not resemble processes most of the time you find yourself, if you are joining a company, let's say uh, a company that one of the alumni, train, uh, alumni I mean, 10 Academy alumni are currently working into, and you start, you are given a project and then you start only by identifying and focusing on just mission and deliverables and dates and cost and budgets, things do not work. Things do not work as you really expect. And then, but when you go uh, on that certain project you are given to, le to, to run and you start focusing, of course, on the mission because this defines where you want to go. But on the deliverables, you set sub-deliverables, sub-sub-milestones, sub-sub-milestones, small, small things you have to achieve for you to get even on a certain deliverable, that deliverable which will take you to the mission that the company is trying to achieve or the end goal of the project, you know? And then you make your plan flexible, like you allow rooms for any kind of new idea you might get on the way that will help you, of, of course, achieve the main goal. And also you start focusing on small problems. When someone is starting to challenge you, like, what do you think about this? Do you think this will work? Or do you think that will not work? And you are flexible enough to focus on those problems for you uh, to find quick solutions, you know, on the way. This is the very uh, recommendable process when we are designing our thinking or how we approach different tasks in a workplace. We should be thinking in processes. What is it going to take us? The steps, like the main steps. You should go into details and you keep options open to change that might need, that might be needed as the real world conditions become very, very unknown. Actually, here I had to write very unknown. Like things change. Probably it's a project that was supposed to be happening. How can I say? Um, uh, let, yeah, like let's say from the COVID perspective, everything just changed in, the, in a blink of an eye. So imagine you had a certain software or a certain program you were working with and they were working on the field and your project is just super, super strict, like it's very diplomatic. So how would you be flexible to adapt to those changes for you to still get on your set goals? So yeah, thinking in processes or planning in processes. So there is this person who mostly writes about uh, process thinking. His name is Edward Deming. You will learn more from him in the challenge document. There are different tasks that are related to what this uh, guy preach in terms of processes. So he always say that, remember that everything is caused by something. 
like a set of steps under specific conditions, a process. Imagine it in this way. You want to hit the gym. Like you want to be fit or increase your weight from let's say 60 to get to 70. So you know that even though you have said to be going to the gym three times a week, you know that if you do not eat well today, let's say today was the time you were supposed to go to the gym. If you do not eat well, you will not really be have the energy to go to the gym. Like you have to remember that everything is caused by something. Everything is caused by something for you to be able to get the results you want. That's why we have to think of every detail, every um, every step that is going to be getting us to achieve what we want to be achieving. And he also say that whenever you cannot define what you are doing as a process, you do not understand what you are doing at all, at all. I will give this example. Um, I will give this example, like we are here at 10 Academy and you, you see yourself passing every week and move to another week and to another week and it's been 10 weeks. But if someone asks you what has been the process of what, of a certain subject you've been learning on, I'm speaking on a technical perspective. Let's say it's a certain project, but you cannot define what you have been doing in that project. But for you, you know that actually you passed the project, probably because it was even a group project but you passed, you went on to our next week. So if you cannot define uh, the process you are going through, it means you do not understand what you are doing at all. So I'm trying to give like real time or real world examples, but I hope you imagine it in a workplace scenario. You are given a project and you see it working, but if you were asked, about a certain, a very, very small aspect of it, just because someone in your team was working on it and you did not have time to look into what they were doing, but what you know is that the project came together at the end and it was successful. You know, it, it means you do not know how you got there. I believe that it's not confusing. So let me hear, split it for you just in real life. Again, very easy example. Imagine you wake up tomorrow morning and you find that you are a son or a daughter of a president. How would you feel? How would you feel? I actually need like two answers here. Imagine you wake up tomorrow morning and you find you are a son or a daughter of a president. How would you feel? Like that means you have everything done for you. You do not actually have to attend 10 academy again because you know we are attending 10 academy so that we can get our dream jobs you know when we graduate so there you are able to have any job you want you are able to have money you have access to money you can travel where you want you can make any friends you want because you have that privilege you can drink or eat whatever you want like you no longer have to struggle you are a son or a daughter of a president so tell me how would you feel? Would you feel fulfilled or would you feel like uh, you do not like it? Between the two, fulfilled or you feel like uh, you don't like it? Any answers? I'm asking. Okay, Nasrallah. Yeah, it depends on the continent. If you mean African continent, then that would be different. If I was in a different uh, continent, then I would I would feel different. <laughs> <You see? laughs> I'm not joking. Uh, it's not a joke here, honestly. So if you if you're saying uh, Africa, absolutely yes, I would feel powerful. Without question. Okay. If I go to Western country, then the that actually would be more uh, pressure into us you know so <laughs> okay. at the end of the day it's in the bend of the continent that my father or my mother is president of it okay uh, that's an interesting one astrala it will depend on the continent if it's africa then mm -mm. <laughs> it's not for you okay let's hear from one more person
anyone else should i take it as a no like you wouldn't like it at all yes fanuel uh okay can you hear me i'm kind of small yeah we can hear you okay but uh, what i'm what my question is what is the context is it getting power or you know having everything or what is it Fanuel, you're just a, a son or a daughter of a president that's all Define I, that in your own yeah, I, can I, work. Guess. <laughs> I mean like i get your question too like i was actually thinking about it but if it is the african one i think it is, I, I think it's better than the virtual country because you can actually do whatever you want and not be responsible you know? okay that's interesting to yeah. yeah sure okay. like i mean if it is having everything in power of course i would be ecstatic but it would also be something you know boring but, because you have everything but, and you have nothing else to do no there is nothing wrong there is nothing being boring about but uh Baskele, i really want to mention a point in here is that when you see, the only issues i have with the with the with the uh, with the western uh, being a daughter of a western or first world countries is that uh, liability will be higher you know they might chase you while in africa let's be realistic you'll never be chased or you'll never be judged it's, it's the harsh truth of, of our continent so and if i'm doing some illegal stuff then absolutely i would love to be the daughter of african president um but if i want to change some places and and uh, improve the society then i will go with first world country honestly I'm just here to tell you that there is also that side of the story. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I All mean, right. the, the context matters for that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right. What doesn't, what doesn't it entail? Is it like doing actually the responsible part or actually getting the you know, benefit? I mean, getting to live like a son or daughter of a president, just here, you know, we already know how they live you know they have access to everything almost everything i think, I think it would be better if it was a king rather than a president <laughs> i think i think i think this question is uh, bringing the worst out of us because uh, if you listen closely the boys are mentioning doing something illegal not about the lifestyle or something or the fancy things just doing something illegal and getting away from it so if that's why we want to be the daughter or the son of the president that's very scary actually i mean who wouldn't like that you know i mean, I mean you already you already have a perfect lifestyle the fact that the moment you get the word the son or the daughter of a president. Lifestyle is not a concern. It's about what else you would do on a side. Do you want to improve the society? Then might be yes. Do you want to improve uh, goals and so on? Then might be yes. But if we are all of us here together, we, each one of us has a president and, and live in an African country, majority of us, and we know how they behave and what they do. So at the end of the day, it's related to what part of mm -hmm. that you want to be, I guess okay i totally understand so we are making so many assumptions here but i think i understand where we all want to go like we would love to be sons and daughters of presidents like oh god so here's the main difference by the way this is uh my intention to asking this question so specifically if you would feel fulfilled like with no questions asked then you are you have an outcome thinking, you know, mindset. But if you feel the opposite, then you have a process thinking outcome. Why? Because, you know, being a son or a daughter of a president, it means you are actually automatically rich, you know, by your age. So it shows that um, if you have this kind of opposite mindset, 
it shows that you do not actually want to re to be rich specifically you want to become someone who knows how to get rich you know i had actually this from elon musk <laughs> so because uh himself i'm not sure it was from a podcast or a journalist asking questions but i saw which quoted somewhere that he always wanted to be someone who knows how to get rich that's that's why his richness doesn't excite him that's why he keeps uh getting bored when things are moving like um you know spacex is actually when, when i mean when he decided to acquire twitter it was because he was being bored from running spacex and tesla because everything was running smoothly everything was okay and blah 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 so he was feeling like he needs some other chaos so he gave out the idea he brought up the idea of buying twitter like he's always been someone who uh wants to become someone who knows how to get rich like someone who's not just rich rich because with his richness now he can sit and his generations will be just i mean they will live smoothly with no really kind of any problem but having a process kind of thinking it made him like this you know so or oh, someone asked was that elon musk born rich though no elon was born in south africa am i i guess i'm right he was born in south africa he's not a native american he moved to america when he had some um he had some softwares that he was good at and he was developing i guess and then he went there and also got the opportunity to start learning from there i believe i don't know about his really story like every story but i know that he's not a native america so yeah he was not born rich but he's been always someone who wanted to become someone who knows how to get rich not how to be rich immediately so this is the kind of process that also aligns uh, I, I mean the um the, the, um, this is kind of an example that i wanted us to talk about uh, so that we understand what's the difference here. Do we want to get to the end goal quickly or do we want to know how to get to that end goal specifically? So yeah, also as someone else said, it's not always about the destination really, uh, especially when we have something we want to achieve, it's always about the journey. So when we see ourselves achieving something step by step, then we know that we are winning no matter how the results are going to be looking like. So let's have uh, a view on the, on the challenge we have on process thinking. So, uh, sorry, I have to change something here. This is two, seven, two. All right, let's go again. So from the introduction, we have another reminder of uh, what process thinking is. It's a common actually term that is used in professional sports. To the people who watch sports, they, I believe you know about this, like many coaches focus on, are we, um, many, co many coaches of these big, big clubs, when they're about to, uh, go into this competition, for instance, the World Cup, let's say. So most of them, they go, of, of course, with the main goal of getting the cup, but they focus on the process. They focus on which match are we going to be playing for us to get there. Is it, uh, let's say, it's Ethiopia that is in, uh, admitted into the World Cup tour. Do we call it a tour? Okay, into the World Cup champion. So for you to be able to win, you do not really just focus on, oh, how will the end match look like? Mm -mm. You invest all efforts on the football, I mean, on, the, on, the, on your first tour, on the first team that you're going to be facing. You learn them, you learn how you're going to be winning them. You do not focus on the outcome. You focus on the process. So process thinking is a common term used in professional sports which puts the focus on the preparation, the hard work for the game, rather than the outcome, the main champion they want to be. 
and process thinking is designated is a designate designate deliberate effort to analyze what is done in order to identify areas of improvements and the advantage of using this it goes beyond its ports because it is easily also applicable in so many areas also such as education or what we are doing here at 10 academy specifically so task number one we are going to be watching this video it's just three minutes maximum it's from nick seven and he talks uh, this is the person who started talking about process like a very very long time ago in the 70s i guess like uh how different uh these uh, how different clubs they should be focusing on how they are going to win different matches for them to get to what they want so uh, i mean when you get to open this video and get to listen you will totally understand what he means let's see yep the video is just three minutes maximum so and then so after have watched the short this short opening video we want you to answer the following questions just these two following questions we want to understand have you ever used process or process thinking in your pursuit of a learning goal you know your learning goals you can take an example here or anywhere you 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 started so it can be about your learning goals could be learning how to shoot, you know, like in soccer or learning how to read a book with discipline. It doesn't just have to be in school. It can be something, anything else you wanted to learn. Was it playing soccer? Was it reading a book with discipline? Because we know this is hard to people who are not used to it. Was it uh, learning how to write an argument good these essays especially when we are trying to apply to different schools to those who want to pursue their masters was it to learn how to write this kind of essays or was it to learn how to cook chapati i wrote this because i'm currently learning how to cook chapati chapati is like our east african injera i believe yvonne you know more about chapati kenya do the best chapatis okay or was it just learning how to code or how to be a good listener or how to be a good public speaker or learning how to become a good friend you know just when you were learning anything we want to understand have you ever used the process um the, or the process thinking in your pursuit of learning goal just share us you can narrate your experience in detail the story just have to be yours i hope we do not take this to any kind of AI. Just write it in your own words. There is no limit to words. Just share us what you were learning and what kind of process were you following for you to be able to achieve that. And number B, how useful has it been in your achievement or how useful has it not been in your achievement of such goal? So you just tell us, was it, uh, was it useful? Or was it not? And use the minimum of 300 words. Like explain in details what did not work, what worked specifically. And then number two, we are going to be reading these four articles. They are not very long. The big one, uh, the large one here, it has like seven pages and they are just very, very engaging. You are going to love them. So you are going to be reading about what is process thinking for you to have an idea like a better idea of what we are talking about this is like a very engaging story about a guy who was targeting to increase his followers on twitter so you are just going to be learning how he did it like what kind of process and uh or what kind of journey did he go through to achieve that and then here you are going to be learning three secrets behind Nick Seven's success. This guy, very known in American football. And then coach, and then you are going to, to be reading this third one about how coaches focuses on the process over outcomes. And then process thinking examples, pros and cons. Here they are going to be showing you what are the pros and what are the cons about it. So you are going just to be reading these specific articles very engaging you are going to love them 
And then you come here and answer this. We want to understand your four main takeaways from each of the resources above. Make sure you summarize your main takeaways from each of the resources in separate graphs. Just four takeaways and make them in separate graphs so that when we are grading, we know which article you are talking about. You can even give it a heading from process thinking. These are your four main takeaways from these. These are your four main takeaways. And then here we have a practic kind of uh, real example from what we are doing here. So let us explore a process thinking and workplace together, especially here at 10 Academy. So you are going to be taking your time to reflect on the concept of process thinking and then the relevance to workplace effectiveness. You are going to be then answering these questions based on your understanding and experiences at 10 Academy. So number one, what do you think process thinking is? Of course, you can take it from what you read here above. And also, why is process thinking important in the context of organization success and efficiency? These refer it to if you are placed in a, a certain role, why do you think it's important that you have to direct your thoughts in a process thinking wise? Or something I forgot to tell you. Actually, in different roles, like openings, I am not sure on your role's perspectives, but in my specific perspective, when it comes to community or talent readiness or customer experience in general, I must, if I have the design thinking mi mindset or process thinking mindset, because our roles revolves under small, small things you have to undertake for you to achieve your target. So I'm not sure about your role, but this is a very good exercise just for you to get ready in case you get us the same question. And number B, so this is why we are going to be identifying different processes in real life. So you already know that 10 Academy mission is to provide Gen AI related trainings in period of six months. This is the main mission. So as you have been here for 10 weeks now, what process do you think we as 10 Academy do on a weekly basis to achieve our mission for you? Let me write it here for better understanding. So we as 10 Academy staff do on a weekly basis to achieve our mission for you. Describe this process. So our main end goal is to provide you this. But what do you think we do on a weekly basis? This is an easy easy task because you are always into our processes <laughs> so like you are involved in everything so just describe this process briefly and then number two what is the important why is it important to identify and understand processes within an organization these two questions are different this is why process thinking is important and this is why is it important then to identify and understand them within an organization, just according to what you wrote here. I hope you see the difference. And then number C, measurement and evaluation. So in your own understanding, how can you tell if a change you make to a process is helpful or not? How can you tell? If I change, let's say um, I give you one example. From everything we do at 10 Academy, there is this week we decided that there are going to be no CBS. And a week that we also decided to, to say that there are no going, we are not going to be having tutorials, ongoing, many ongoing tutorials just because of a project that was ongoing. So why do you think that change happened? And how can you tell if it has been helpful or not? Great. Then number two, I'm just giving you an example just to understand what we mean here. So what do you think a certain random change that happens in your day-to-day -day processes or things you follow to do your work uh, are changing? And you know, how can you tell if th this has been helpful or not? The measurement. And then number two on C, why might, might it be a good idea to check if a new way of doing things is working well? 
some change might happen and you decide to adopt new strategies. So what do you think also being flexible in what we do and adopting new ideas might lead us to actually getting better results? That is it. So we are going to be following these marking rubrics on task one, task two, task three. They reflect to the activities we have here. Submission, again, let's get used to it that submission is in PowerPoint. Let's get used to it and let's get used to the fact that your submission doesn't have to be in 15 slides. Make it less than 10 slides. Like, let's, let, let us get used to it. But it is, this is it. I hope you are going to have fun working on this challenge because it's a behavior we should adopt, not only in our workplace, but also in our daily lives. And I hope that we submit on time. We have been receiving late submissions, many late submissions than in the previous weeks. So let's aim to submit on time. That is it for now. Thank you so much, Fenuel. And that's is it clear. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Any questions? Any questions? Not from my side. Okay. So I will stop presenting and also stop the recording.